Namaste. So, uh, we share a few thoughts on artificial intelligence because it's going around all over. And uh, these are uh, one viewpoint. That's how they have to be seen based on our understanding. Each person will have his own understanding. But um, if we look at the previous century, we see a race between technological advancement and the human consciousness. Shobinda has used the word evolutionary crisis in this context. And he says that there is tremendous advantage, uh, advancement of science and technology and it has led humanity to a point where if there is not a commensurate advancement of the human consciousness, then it can lead to a collapse. Proof Mahabharata. Tremendous technological ad advancement. But it was not commensurate with inner advancement. Another proof Look at medicine. Now, I am taking some comparative things. So much advancement compared to even 50 years back. Or so we will feel. But each of these advancements has led to what is normally called as each technological advancement leads to a biological amputation. This is a fact. When we were growing up as children, the way we remembered the uh, multiplication tables, now it's difficult because everything is available on calculator. You don't even have to worry about it. So people may say, why worry about it when it's available? Why we should worry about it is because when we try, when we put an effort, let's say to remember the tables, I'm taking one example. Then what is happening? The brain is developing. The human consciousness is advancing through the challenges. And that is what is known as resilience factor, which comes handy. Now we talk about resilience factor in India, which is uh, helping the economy. But when we put ourselves at the mercy of technology, then there is a problem and there is a serious danger. Because if technology collapses, we collapse. So, classic example was during the virus epidemic and... People were dying, thinking, oh, I couldn't get a seat in a place with a ventilator. They were buying seats. So much of problems took place, so much of human worse things came out. People were reserving beds, I've heard, in hospital settings, giving 10,000 rupees with a ventilator. Now, this is one kind. Now, ventilator is definitely an advance or advancement over, say, 50 years back. But what it has done, when people didn't have this, what did they do? They fall back upon natural resources. So Sri says that uh, with this medical advantage, it has given us a crutch from the vegetal kingdom, but robbed us of our natural immunity. So is it advancement or is it not? It is for us to see ourselves. This, this is a proof which is previous. We can see recently. Then people speak about technology as wired this world. It's true. Now you can communicate at a push button. But has it increased the natural love within human beings? We are sitting in the same room and we are on WhatsApp. Now this is also a fact. When these things were not there, I, I don't know many people have may have experienced it. I have experienced it as children used to sit in what was called as Mahalla and we knew all the children by the names and all, all were auntie and uncle and we sat and played and then we came back to do our work. But now we don't need to do that. We don't do that. We don't know who is the next door neighbor. So has it really connected us at one level? Yes. And it has given us tremendous ease. So I don't have to worry about or somebody doesn't have to worry about the child he can... He expects an SMS, can talk immediately. Comfort level, yes. But is this comfort level equivalent to progress? I am leaving aside right now the factor that each such advancement will increase another race for uh, money. Because you know now there will be people who can afford artificial intelligence and the advantages that it can give. And there are others who cannot afford and they will try to get into that line because they believe that that is the way forward. I mean, there was a time when people were struggling because they couldn't have a computer and to have a computer was a big thing. So we need to understand that, for instance, natural health. Now, 
people used to walk cycle now we are coming full circle and saying that well cycling should be done as an exercise <laughs> when we had the cycles we left it so many many things like that each technological advancement can lead to uh, an amputation with ai it is still more dangerous because you know i think it's isaac asimov's um, nightmare come true so there he speaks about the rise of the machines and he says that the first law would be that you will not harm a human being but these machines are not just machines this is an error that it's a machine which a man is controlling even the human machine is controlled by forces and i won't be surprised if ai paradoxically and i believe that's what is happening is beginning to do things which it is not programmed for from what i have heard from very reliable sources it is beginning to do things for which it was not programmed for it automatically gets into that mode and discovers and uh, almost like the way human intelligence does operate so this is where you may program it that you have to act with these limits what if ai uh, tomorrow you know takes a different course altogether so we don't know what's happening inside you have created a structure which is an instrument that's all who is going to use this instrument that is a big question will it be a human being but a human being himself is an instrument puppet instrument of forces or forces that will act in the computer through the computer and ask us to do things to press a button to switch on to do something we know that today internet one of the biggest unfortunately industries pornography industry lot of dark money comes through that and why does it happen what has it done it has given pleasure to human beings but robbed them of natural emotions so one reason why people are not able to love the way they should love is because of this it has changed the way we look at life now so this while people are going gaga there is even i heard somebody no 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 when machine can do everything that a human beings do then human beings will look for something higher history suggests that that has never happened it's not like when we entered the aircraft age so people had time so they started you know looking inside in fact if we really look at it the more we have advanced technology the less time people have it's a paradox and some of us who have seen these two generations i have seen a generation when technology was minimal in a village life lots of time lots of time to contemplate to think to reflect to play to talk to each other now because of technology you are flooded with information and you are attracted to information you are lured by information apparent or real and the capacity to discern is lost in all this well there must be some good in the evil and there is one good is that it is going to exhaust the human mind through a rapid accelerated mode there will be a time when human mind will not be able to handle all this and that's when two things may happen either it will collapse much of it will collapse or some will turn away towards something higher and greater which will proceed first in the race on that will depend the future of humanity if ai and things like that drive human beings on the path of just constant technological advancement and if the you know there are people who say that you know or if we are like gods we are doing what we hear about indra and others doing it's a very dangerous thing gods you become a god by a change of consciousness from the human to the divine imagine technology like this in the hand of a pygmy brain already deep fakes have started now you just can't rely on anything anybody's name anything can come out imagine its scope you can make a politician you can make a celebrity you can make a common man speak anything and it will be so real i think uh, you really need to look deep to understand that well <laughs> we had that example when recently trump is arrested and they all went went berserk uh, even i think few days back when a russian prankster tricked some of the big wigs 
in US, in UK. So this technology and all is, we must understand that it only means there is an urgent pressing need for the human consciousness to evolve beyond the human into a higher spiritual and divine intelligence. And if and when we have it, this will not be necessary. Let me put it that way. If I am able to discover the deep peace and joy inside, if I can communicate without uh, instruments, imagine when telepathy, not telepathy, but intuition becomes more frequent. And who knows, as Sri says, with the transmutation of the body, then who will need all this technology? So we must understand there is a pressing need. I look upon AI with very suspect eyes at this point of time. But now it is there. It's no point crying. It's no point complaining. Well, it's there. It's a challenge to the human consciousness not to learn AI so much as to evolve beyond AI and HI, artificial intelligence and human conscious intelligence, to the SI and DI, uh, spiritual and divine intelligence. And I think people who feel really committed to human progress and evolution must take that road because this is going to stifle the uh, evolutionary capacity and ability. When, yeah, essays are ready, ready made. It's, see, when we were children, what were we told? We were told that, well, don't uh, ask your parents to help you in writing an essay. Why? Because it's about my growth. It's not a parents who are going to appear for exams. So, now, imagine all this is available. Not only available, look at how it can swing everything. When we start giving it the darja or the status of a god, many people will do that. I know people understand that whatever ultimately has been fed inside it. But imagine it can play with things. You have the idea of, you, you ask the AI to generate history. From all the data that has fed in, been fed into it, what will it come out in history? Will it ever say that it was Krishna who was conducting the whole war? It's just not possible. So it will miss out on again the inner and deeper dimension which is the most important one. It may give you facts but facts also are skewed. It will pick up from a whole lot of data and for it, uh, well, Romila Thapar's history is as good or as bad as P. N. Oak. And it will just pick up randomly and present before us and because we have begun to trust that so much. <laughs> and obviously this technology will be misused. Already it had started. Now people became conscious because, uh, you know, if you asked uh, AI chat GPT in the beginning, just when it had started, that give us a, uh, give us a joke on Rama. It will take out jokes. All kinds of jokes. Not so good jokes. Anyways, if you say, give a joke on Muhammad, it will say, we are sorry, we are not supposed to uh, make fun of religious sentiments. Because it was fed that way. So we should be very careful about this kind of technology. Good uses are there in teaching, education, there are some good uses. But when we look at the totality of things, we don't just see some good uses uh, which could be there. I mean, I was reading today in one of the forums, Chat GPT generated, AI generated rhythm of poetry. Even Shubindu's works, people have started, you know. Uh, so it, it generates a poetry. It is generated on a poetry. You say, give this meter and I want a poetry. You'll write a good poetry. But that's not the point. Poetry is for the refinement of the person who is writing. What about his creative words? I found it so foolish that people even feel interested in Asking an AI to write poetry as an experiment to see how it writes. Now, well, it will write, evidently it will write. But imagine if among the uh, seemingly elite, still this kind of kautuhal comes. Uh, let us see how it writes a poetry in hexameter or pentameter or whatever meter. Let us see how it translates the Sanskrit hymn. Imagine, this is just like a curiosity driven. What is it going to do in the average human being? And what about the purpose of poetry, which is to refine, to uplift, to open doors of creativity? So this is where I feel that, uh, um, I, I, I mean, in the balance of things, it's become 
a critical stage of evolution i would look at it not as good and bad but it is a cry for urgency of evolution i'll close with what mother said she said right now there is a lot of tension everywhere knowledge is bursting beyond its seam that's what she would said and humanity has reached a bursting point and it will either burst open and collapse or it has to evolve that's what she used the word is spiritualization and she said there is an urgency she used the word time presses and i feel now time is not only pressing it is hammering evolve 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 beyond the ai and the hi to the si and the di or else collapse namaste